stand for free. Stand for free. We'll hold on. Stand with me. Stand for free. Stand with me. She's a train wreck who is totally unqualified to be the President of the United States of America. There are some people who thrive under pressure, and there are some people who crack under pressure. She's a cracker. Hello, America, and welcome to Hashtag Go Right with Peter Boykin, where we cut through the noise to bring you the real story from a constitutionalist perspective. I'm a constitutionalist for liberty, and I like to uphold the principles of liberty in our constitutional republic. Before we dive into today's crucial topics, let's take a moment to understand the shifting sands of information dissemination. Picture this, one in five Americans now rely on influencers for their news. Yes, that's right. People like me, you've heard it right, as traditional Media wanes, influencers rise with a surprising tilt towards the right at 27% against 21% leaning left. This shift tells a story of a public seeking alternative voices, perhaps disillusioned by what they see as biased reporting. Now let's address some of the pressing issues of our time. We'll be right back with hashtag go right with Peter Boykin. Remember, we fight for what's right because it's time to go right. Time to go right. Time to go right. Time to go right. President-elect Donald Trump has made it clear with a simple true on Truth Social, 
that he's eyeing a national emergency declaration to empower the military in what he describes as mass deportations. It's a national emergency for mass deportations. This comes as Judicial Watch's Tom Fitton speculated on Trump's readiness to reverse what many conservatives term the Biden invasion. Now, there's historical precedent with this. Remember, Trump isn't new to this game. He previously declared a national emergency in 2019 to fund border security, a move that was both lauded and lambasted. And this time it's about enforcement, not construction. Aiming to deport millions who've crossed into the U.S. illegally during the Biden administration. I mean, there's one thing building a wall, the other thing and keeping people from coming through it and just leaving the door wide open. Now, the public has an opinion about this. The opinion polls show a majority, 58% of American voters, back these deportations, reflecting a populace eager for stricter immigration control. Now, there's a plan. The operational plan Trump's strategy, according to up incoming border czar Tom Homan, involves overwhelming sanctionary cities with ICE agents. If local cooperation isn't forthcoming, Truth's emergency declaration could grant military support to ICE, easing the logistical burden. Now, looking at the big picture, this isn't just about numbers. It's a statement on national sovereignty and law enforcement. However, critics see it as an overreach, questioning the legality and ethics of using military forces for civilian law enforcement duties. Now, i got to tell you, though, I've got to tell you that the presidential power is to protect the citizens, the citizens of America, the security, the sovereignty of our nation. And I think what Trump is doing completely falls within his duties as president. And something that Biden has neglected and ignored. We'll be right back. We got a leader who knows what to do. From the city streets to the farmland plains, he's bringing back sunshine. And then the rain, oh, America, the red, white, and blue. He's working hard, yeah, for me and you. Let's all join hands and sing along, cause together we're strong. Sha na na, let's make America great again. Ooh, we're on the Trump train, my friend. With hope in our hearts, we're gonna win. Sha na 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 na, make America great again. to do can you feel the beat he's cutting those taxes and fixing the streets the factories hum jobs are on the rise you can see the promise in our children's eyes oh america it's the land we love guided by faith and the stars above we're reaching higher side by side Together we'll thrive Sha na na, let's make America great again Ooh, we're on the Trump train, my friend With hope in our hearts, we're gonna win Sha na 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 na, make America great again Bop bop, shoo we do bop, dreams are alive He's fighting for freedom, keeping us in stride Hand in hand, let's all take a stand It's time to make our home a better land Sha na na, let's make America great again Ooh, we're on the Trump train, my friend With faith and pride, we'll shine till the end Sha na 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 Make America great again Hey, hey! Make America great today!
Welcome back to Hashtag Go Right with Peter Boykin. We're talking about media maneuvers and celebrity clashes. This is a new segment of the podcast, something I used to do on a singular basis. But currently right now, as we coast through, hopefully, easily, uh, through to the Trump presidency, there's a lack of a lot of news out there. Now, I could tell you that in the news, there was long-range missiles fired from Ukraine at Russia, and there was talks of Biden trying to put us in World War III, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. A lot of people try to go over that news. I, for one, like to see the full picture, so I didn't really talk about it as much. But we like to talk about other subjects that are important. And so this segment is a segment where I describe something and I show the video. Usually I have videos in between segments, but I show the video that goes along with it. So let's start with this one. The MSNBC flip-flop. Joe Scarborough and Micah Berginski, again, I don't know how to pronounce her name, and I'm not getting paid to do it, of Morning Joe have, in a surprising twist, met with Donald Trump after years of venomous opposition. Critics are quick to label this as opportunistic, suggesting that their random interest in Trump might be less about enlightenment and more about maintaining relevance or gaining insider scoops. Makes me wonder what Stephen Colbert would do, you know, four more years of him complaining about Donald Trump and making fun. Here's the clip. Over the past week, Joe and I have heard from so many people, from political leaders to regular citizens deeply dismayed by several of President-elect Trump's cabinet selections, and they are scared. Last Thursday, we expressed our own concerns on this broadcast and even said we would appreciate the opportunity to speak with the President-elect himself. On Friday, we were given the opportunity to do just that. Joe and I went to Mar-a-Lago to meet personally with President-elect Trump. It was the first time we have seen him in seven years. Now, we talked about a lot of issues, including abortion, mass deportation, threats of political retribution against political opponents, and media outlets. We talked about that a good bit. And it's going to come as no surprise to anybody who watches this show, has watched it over the past year or over the past decade, that we didn't see eye to eye on a lot of issues, and we told him so. What we did agree on was to restart communications. My father often spoke with world leaders with whom he and the United States profoundly disagreed. Uh, that's a task shared by reporters and commentators alike. We had not spoken to President Trump since March of 2020, other than a personal call Joe made to Trump on the morning after the attempt on his life in Butler, Pennsylvania. In this meeting, President Trump was tearful, he was upbeat, he seemed interested in finding common ground with Democrats on some of the most divisive issues. And for those asking why we would go speak to the president-elect during such fraught times, especially between us, I guess I would ask back, why wouldn't we? Five years of political warfare has deeply divided Washington and the country. We have been as clear as we know how in expressing our deep concerns about President Trump's actions and words in the coarsening of public debate. But for nearly 80 million Americans, election denialism, public trials, and January 6th were not as important as the issues that moved them to send Donald Trump back to the White House with their vote. Joe and I realize it's time to do something different. And that starts with not only talking about Donald Trump, but also talking with him. Meanwhile, the views outrage. Those hags are outraged again. This is not sat well with everyone, the MSME C flip-flop. Particularly over at The View, Sonny Hostin's question of, of Joe and Micah's journalistic integrity reflects the internal conflict within the media over how to handle Trump's resurgence. Well, I think journalistic integrity would be you can learn how to interview everybody, especially the president at the end of the day. That's real journalistic impression. All right, here's the clip. The bottom line is 
that America needs a free press that is willing to speak truth to power right now, more than ever. And I think that we have to be very clear-eyed when we think about the president-elect and cover the president-elect. And I don't think you need to sit down for 90 minutes at Mar-a-Lago and kiss his ring to be able to speak truth and to be able to cover a story. So maybe they're not journalists in the true sense. Maybe they're saying that they're opinion general, uh, journalists. But we have to remember that Trump is the guy who ushered in the era of fake news. He is the guy who ushered in alternative facts. He is the guy who attacked three black female journalists. He's the guy that revoked Jim Acosta's press credentials for asking him a question. And so I think that this president-elect, I hate to say it, um, would like nothing more than to have only Fox News cover him, would like nothing more than a state-sponsored media. And um, I don't think he can be trusted in the way that other presidents can be trusted. This is an aberration. So free speech is under threat. Across the pond, Winston Marshall of Mumford and Sons finds himself potentially facing arrest in the UK for his political tweets. This situation underscores a broader issue of free speech where expressing political views can lead to legal repercussions, a stark contrast to the First Amendment protections we enjoy in the U.S. And there's so many people out there that are like, what about my free speech? What about my free speech? And they are in other countries, and they really, really like our Constitution, but they live under something else. And it's sad, especially in other countries who should have the right to free speech, who should have the right to bear arms should have the rights that we do as Americans. And there's so many Americans out there who go, I'm moving to Canada, I'm moving somewhere else, I can't live in a country with Donald Trump. And they don't realize how good they have it here in this country. Now watch this clip, and um, we'll cut into, uh, we'll cut after that, and we'll come back with the hashtag Go Right Recap Remix. We'll be right back. We're rising today No time to let freedom fade away I'll fight anyway Today is another day to guide you Lighting the way I'll be standing for the truth, okay? Marching away, slowly learning that liberty's worth the fight. Say after me, it's far better to be brave than weary. Stand with me, stand with me, stand for free.
Welcome back to the hashtag Go Right Recap Remix. In today's episode, we navigated the complex waters of immigration policy, media integrity, and free speech. Trump's potential use of national emergency powers for deportation raises questions about executive authority and constitutional rights. Meanwhile, media figures like Joe and Micah are playing political chess with Donald Trump. But Donald Trump plays 3D chess much better. You know, that chess game from Star Trek that Spock was so good at. And artists like Winston Marshall highlight the global fight for free expression. That's it, folks. For more of these issues, keep it locked in to GoWriteNews.com. Dive into our in-depth articles. Join the conversation on Rumble. Our catch hashtag GoWrite with Peter Boykin across all major platforms. And if you find value in what we do, consider supporting via Cash App or on the website. Remember, we're here to uphold the truth, defend liberty, and ensure our constitutional republic thrives. Until next time, stay vigilant, stay informed, and always go right. God bless everybody. Peace. It's time to go right. Let the truth ignite. We're bringing the world right news into the light. With Peter Boykin at the helm, we're taking a stand. Constitutionalist for America, we protect this land. Welcome to the place where opinions align With liberty's flame, our voices combine Citizen journalism, honest and true Let's go right, it's the podcast for you Welcome to the place where opinions align With liberty flame, our voices combine Citizen journalism, honest and true Let's go right, it's the podcast for you Time to go right, let the truth ignite We're bringing the right news into the light With Peter Boykin at the helm, we're taking a stand Constitutionalist for America, we protect this land Welcome to the place where opinions align With liberty's flame, our voices combine Citizen journalism, honest and true Let's go right, it's the podcast for you Combined citizen journalism, honest and true. Let's go right, it's the podcast for you. Welcome to the place where opinions align. With liberty's flame, our voices combine Citizen journalism, honest and true Let's go right, it's the podcast for you Welcome to the place He's got a flag that it waves for
for me Reminds me of liberty Where freedom rings as bright as the morning sky yeah. Now and then when I see her planes She takes me away from these heavy chains And if I stare too long I'd rise and fight again Stars that light the night As if they guard our way I pledge my hand to stand and fight Come what may Her hills remind me of a steadfast place Where the brave have bled And laid their lives to keep her safe Shine